Welcome to Radio Antioch. This video is an outreach of Antioch Tabernacle Ministries. So here's an advice on how to change something in your life. We're talking about New Year's resolutions. Take a piece of paper and at the top write, I am not insane. Okay, because the first thing you have to admit is I have to lay out a plan to do something. I have to come up with actions. Okay, so what that means is this is your action plan. And the next thing I would do is make three columns. On the left, write out what the Lord is telling you to work on this year. Okay, so maybe your New Year's resolution, one of mine is to lose some weight. I'm not terribly overweight, but I could use to lose a few. And then you can write the next question of what attitude in the middle column, what do you change here first? Okay, so there, there's an attitude that you have to adjust. Well, if, if weight is something that God's talking to you about, then maybe the attitude is to, to say, you know, I need to pay attention to the fact that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Okay? And start thinking of myself not as a repository for Fritos and hot sauce, but as a temple of God. And so, you know, if you, if you see yourself as a home for Doritos and hot sauce, um, then it's easy to eat them. But if you see yourself as a holy temple, then you're less likely to put as many uh, chips and hot sauce into the belly. But there's an attitude there. Another thought would be that I need to keep myself strong as a servant. In one of my previous sermons I was talking to you, I said, you know, if the Lord, if you were a servant in a, a house of like a British, um, you know, rich guy, and he were to ring the bell at midnight, and you didn't show up, even though you're supposedly off work, he rings the bell, you're supposed to go running, right? Well, I need to be strong, I need to be capable of doing this. Well, if I'm not in good shape, I may not be available when the Lord needs me. So these are a couple of attitudes you could write down in that middle column. Hey, I need to be ready for action, and I need to treat my body as if it's a temple of the Holy Spirit. And then you can actually focus on those things and say, gee, did I treat my body like a temple today? You can actually ask yourself that question. Okay. Then on the right-hand side, you have the actual actions. Well, maybe your action would say, I'm not going to eat snacks after dinner or maybe after 7 o'clock or something, I don't know. But that's some, something that you can do differently that would help. And you say, oh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk at least once a week. Well, if you did those things, and just but change your attitude first and then laid out some things, you would be far more likely to have success. So there's a way to do the things that God's nudging you to do. And I'm not telling you to do this out of tradition. I'm just pointing out that our Jewish heritage brethren start every year with this type of prayer and fasting. And I think it's a good thing for Christians to do. What is God calling you to change? Where does he want to take you this year? And if you don't do anything, you know, I, let me throw it at another way. How many people believe God has a plan for them and is going to take them to do something different in their life than they're doing right now? Okay, now... If you are being taken somewhere different than where you are right now, what are you doing different to be able to wear that when the time comes? You see, if you do nothing different, nothing changes. So if God has called you to become a missionary, or if God has called you to move into uh, a different career path, you have to start taking some steps so that you wear that in your head first. You know, I, I started trying to wear in my head being an evangelist and a man of God long before anybody recognized me as that, if that makes any sense. In fact, sometimes when I have discouraging times in doing our Africa ministry or doing launching the ministry here, when I get discouraged, I have to remind myself, it was God who called you. You just have to be faithful. But part of that is the identity. You know, if God is calling you to do something in his kingdom, or calling you into a new career or something different, you have to start wearing that in your head first. You have to see yourself as a man of God or a woman of God. You have to see yourself as a missionary. And sometimes, you know, there, there's a, a phrase in Hollywood that you fake it till you make it. Um, you know, sometimes I'll preach to 10 or 15 people uh, just because I'm being faithful to do what God told me to do. But then I go to some village somewhere and there may be 300, or in one case, 600. So, you know, you try and take it with a grain of salt and say, okay, if there's 10 people, we'll preach what God gives us, and if there's 600, we'll do the same. But part of that is the understanding in your head that God called you to do something. See, then you're less likely to get discouraged. And understand, I can get discouraged. 
you know, uh, starting a new ministry like we have done in this last year, uh, we've had ups and downs. And, you know, some of my missionary friends are having a really tough time financially because a lot of the giving is, is down. And they need encouragement. But those are the times that you have to know that you have been given this task. You have to be identified. So the first thing you have to change is your identity up here. You have to really get behind and believe what God has told you. If you've got a prophetic word over your life, some prophecy that a prophet gave you, the first thing the devil does is try and come and nail you with a contradiction and get you to go, oh, this isn't going to happen. In fact, it's almost like clockwork. Okay, anybody ever seen that? It's like a fight right afterwards. Okay, well, the reason for that is that if you don't ever own that, it will never happen. Okay, so sometimes what's going on is you have to own the changes that God is calling you to make before you see them. Then it's easier to walk by faith and not by sight. You see, to walk by faith, you have to see it by faith. If you don't see where you're going by faith, then how can you possibly walk? Because either you see it by faith or by sight. Either you see your destination in the natural or you see it in the spirit. If it's not there in the natural, you have to make it real in the faith part first. So this is the part, that middle column. Here's what God's saying, and that's the now on the left side. The middle column is the stuff you change in your head. Okay, then the right-hand column is little actions you can take. So when I started to do this ministry project four years ago, the first thing I did after we, you know, hung out our shingle, we created the little corporation and did all the paperwork to become a nonprofit Christian ministry, I sent some letters to some people I had met in Africa, one of which is this brother I build churches with, um, and said, hey, you, you once said to me when we met in, in um, Tanzania that I could come back and we should minister together. And he said, sure, come on. And we contacted another pastor that we had met there and said, I'd like to do a pastor's conference. He said, come on. But you know, those were the actions I took. But the first thing we did is actually go create, do the paperwork, create a ministry, and hang out a shingle. So we got a phone number and an internet address and email even though there's nobody to preach to. And then we start saying, okay, God, open the doors. So sometimes you have to change the identity in your head first, and then you start taking baby steps and let God unfold things in your life. And the, the fun part about baby steps is if you make a mistake, God can correct you, and it's not all that expensive. You know, <laughs> you haven't spent five years. All right, so it says in Matthew 26, 41, keep watching and praying that you will not enter into temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now, can anybody testify that that's a true statement? That sound, that sound familiar? Okay. The reference here is from where? It's from the Garden of Gethsemane. Remember all the disciples were saying, Oh, Lord, we will die with you. We will stand with you forever. And, of course, they couldn't even stay awake. Okay. Here's the time when Jesus needs somebody praying with him because he's like, This is tough. Lord, if possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but thy will be done. This is the time when he could have used a brother praying with him, okay? They're all out cold, all right? So much for our boast, right? Yeah, of course, I don't know. Maybe they were trying to wear it too. Maybe Peter was really trying to be the man of God, and he hadn't grown into it yet. He's, I'll stand with you, God, but then you see where he really was. So, you know, there's, there was forgiveness for them, I, I guarantee that. But Jesus told him, he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. You want to go there, but you can't quite wear it yet. See, that was the contradiction. Here are these 12 people that are going to change the world. You know, one of them changed it for the last time on that night. Uh, so then there's 11 more who changed the world in a much more positive way. Okay, but here are these 12 people that are going to change the world, but you see that they're not quite ready to wear that apostle thing yet. <laughs>